making a life worth living and a return worth having is about the people in our lives and how we embrace them and how we chase them and how we literally go on after much to do about sometimes nothing. In reality, when I'm looking at how to make a life worth living and a retirement worth having, I'm looking at how do I produce myself in a way that makes sense to me, but also makes sense to the people who are looking for employees and looking for strategic alliances and looking for profitable partnerships. And in life, we all have to do that. We all have to produce ourselves in different ways. We all have to look at who we are right now, in this moment in time, decide, are we on the path that the Lord has made for us, or are we off track? Are we producing the best life we can possibly do at this moment in time, or do we have the wrong people in our lives, and we need to go out and look for the right people? Now, how do I mean about that? I don't mean that there are good people and bad people per se. I just mean that, are we aligned with the house of the Lord? What I mean by that, of course, is a pastor and lay minister is that sometimes in life we put ourselves in line with people that we feel good about, but in truth, deep within our soul, we know they're not quite right for us. There's something that's there that's not quite there, or there's something that is present that is not quite right for us, our children, our people in our lives, and that's something we have to really look at carefully, because we can very easily be manipulated into thinking that we are the end all of all things for all people. And that's not true. We also have the right to decide who we're going to spend our time with, of course. But in truth, sometimes we put off the people that love us the most, that know us the best, and know how to produce from us the greatest wealth we can possibly muster. But you have to be open to listening. You have to be open to hearing people say, listen, I have this plan and I need you as a part of this plan because I'm pretty confident that that's what the Lord wants in my life and in yours. Now, how do you say that to someone? I mean, let's face it, most people don't talk about God at all, period, in any type of business context. Most of us get really annoyed with the Christian Google pages, not because they're a bad thing, it's just that when we call them, we don't always get the experience we're expecting. And that's something that Christians really have to work on. But in truth, it's no different than the metaphysical community, that there are people who are good and charlatans, and there are people who are not good, and there are people who are all over the place in the middle of their spirituality. But in truth, they're still running a print business practice. And the absolute aspect of every literal business is basically what Drucker told us long ago, that the whole goal of making a business is to make and keep customers. That's how we keep producing ourselves in a way that makes sense to other people. It's also what provides for us income. When I had a little business in the arts and design district of a affluent community, I was able to make and keep customers for a long time. My customers, my service provision, my contracts literally were annual, but people renewed year after year for four to six to seven years in some cases. That's a good track record. Now, how do you do that? Well, you build relationship, you build trust, you can provide them a high quality service, and you do it because they long to learn what you've got to share with them. Now, in most cases, we have things that we do in our lives that are very unique and different to other people. We have skill sets, we have talents, we have capabilities that other people don't really have. And in our lifetime, we have to really think about, have we met every person we're going to meet if we stay in this particular line a field of work? Or are we destined for something greater? Are we really supposed to be in a pastor role or a pastor's wife role? Or are we supposed to be helping someone move beyond the challenges that other people have put on them? You see, it's easy to align yourself with the Barbies and Kens of the world who produce things because of how they look and what they say and how they sing and how they dance, but that's really not what the world is about. Most people have to do a lot of hard work to find the right job. Some people return home to Indiana because they've got to take care of an elderly parent. Other people don't leave because they've got elderly parents who can help them look after their children when they've gone through a divorce. You see, in life, we don't really know who's been put in our path unless we're paying attention to what the Lord is saying to us. If we're not listening to God, we could end up in the same wrong relationship all over again. We could end up married and producing no good work. I've had people say to me, you know, you're to blame for this, that, and the thing. I'm like, really? I haven't seen you in a long time. I haven't talked to you in forever. And in truth, if we had been talking, maybe you'd be a lot further along on the path that God wants for you than on this path that you're on right now and not feeling happy and content in your life. You see, it's easy to be happy in fleeting moments. It's openly, actually, quite simple to have a simple life, to simply get up, go to work, go home, and start the day all over again. 
it's another thing entirely to be actively, proactively interfering or involving yourself in other people's lives. What I've been amazed about in this time of homelessness is how many people are trying to get in and control what I'm doing in my life of homelessness. I've had people very generous and very kind who gifted me a resource so that I could do something and move my business a little further down the path. And I'm most grateful for those people. But I've also had people who've literally tried to say, I want to take you somewhere. I want to put you in a hotel room. I want to do all this. And I'm like, you know, that's not my priority right now. Because a couple days in a hotel room, yes, might give me peace of mind. Yes, might give me a warm place to be. But it doesn't produce for me a new life. That money of investment could have been put in something else. That money could be literally put into an office space where I could literally work and sleep at the same time without too much hassle because these people are, well, they're mortgage capabilities and they know how to get those things done. Things that I don't know how to produce for myself because that was not my professional line of work or my industry. Now, what am I really talking about, people? I'm talking about deciding what are my skill sets versus what are someone else's skill sets. What are my longing points versus what can someone else bring to the table to my life? And openly, we sometimes have to really look at, is the man or the woman in our life the core center of our universe, really the one that the Lord has put there for us? And what I mean by that is that I had a loving relationship for a long time, more than 10 years is what I usually admit to publicly. The people who know me best know exactly how long it was. But the truth is that we were not 100% equally yoked. We had a lot of pull, a lot of give and take, and we had a lot of times of struggle and strife because of the requirements that a person had to be in an international bicultural relationship. But in truth, if I had found someone who was equally yoked to me, it might not have been such a struggle. It might have just been, okay, let's get her done. And that's how people are. I've had that experience once or twice in my life with other people's lives. It's been sort of scary that my ability to interact with them to involve myself in their lives was quite smooth and easy. But where it became complicated was when other outsiders started to make comments to those women about their inappropriateness in their little friendship with me. Now, why do I share that story? Because it's important. Because people on the outside have no lawful right to say anything about a relationship that's going on on the inside between two people that the Lord has put on the path with one another. You see, sometimes in life, the Lord knows exactly what our men, women, or children are going to do in our lives. And they start to put in our place, the, the Lord directs the angel realm to put in our place people who are ready to receive us, to love us, to keep us thinking about how wonderful we are, to help us feel good about ourselves, and to help us literally move forward with silliness, with laughter, with strife sometimes, with struggle. But openly, they stick with us. They don't ever leave. They might step away for a time, especially if we're raging and difficult and blaming. But if we are openly honest with ourselves, if we really look at what's going on in our own hearts, minds, and souls, we might just recognize that what we feel for those people is actually a deep, profound love or feeling of hope or something that keeps us going in life. But as long as that one individual still longs to see us, then we have some sort of power in the world. But the truth is, the real wielding of power is literally getting up off our butts, going over to someone and saying, I understand you're in a moment of struggle. I know you've got some plans for yourself, and you probably have got a pretty good game plan. I'm not sure what of my skill sets or my resources could be useful to you, but I'd like to help in some way. What might I be able to lend you in terms of skills or resources or capabilities or networks that would help you move closer to your plan for your life. Now, wouldn't that be an amazing place to live? Wouldn't that produce a lot of peace in the world? Wouldn't that reduce a lot of struggle and strife that people go through? You see, in life, we have moments of time to make all the difference in the world for people. I have literally said, show up for me, people, to several people who claim to have been my family or claim to have been my friends. And yet, in the most difficult moment of my life, literally freezing in the snow, no one can seem to show up. I've asked my one sibling for one simple thing, the return of a cane that I own. She insists that she purchased it, which is not true. My spouse actually bought it for me, and I know precisely when and where it was purchased. But we left it accidentally at my sibling's house. It's a simple little thing. It's a little thing that in her mind she can replace for $2, and yet she won't return it to me. Now why is that? What level of control is she trying to have in that moment? 
the time and what level of disrepair is she trying to keep that relationship in? I have another sibling that stalks me regularly and six her friends on my life. They lie about why they're coming into my life. They try and manipulate me to do something other than my plan for today. Then they bring her name up and I'm like, there's a restraining order that says she may not come near me. And they don't get all that detail. Now, why do I tell these stories? Because they're real life. It happens in families. Families do fall apart. Now, is the restraining order in place? I think so. Did I get all my mail through the mailbox? Not necessarily. Have I looked at my own situation and been very careful about making sure I'm not overstepping bounds with where there's a various letter, letters of obligation? Absolutely. But if I'm not being shown those letters, if someone, if police officers, avoiding me uh, <clears throat> and and uh, not allowing me to see those things, then that puts me at risk. It puts you at risk. You see, in life, we have moments of time to help people. We have moments of time to show our love of God. You see, it's God who puts people in our paths. There's always somebody who says, you know, you're either here for uh, a season or you're here for a reason. And there's some big old rhyme about this whole thing, short term, long term, and, and, and forever term. But the truth is, only the Lord knows what the forever is. And in some cases, we've been aligned with these people in our in our soul groups, in our soul keeping groups, for lifetimes, through all the reincarnations of our life, through the plans that the God in heaven puts us through to learn, to grow, to strive, to go towards nirvana, as some of those religions say. And openly, that may be a stretch for Christians who are so morbid in their concept of God that they don't realize how heavenly and magical the Lord is still. The Lord is so full of magic, it is even funny. I've experienced more magic in my life because one woman that I love dearly showed me something, and I put it into my faith practice of Christianity and metaphysics, and openly, I've had such a magical experience. I long to show it to her. I long to tell her about it. I long to explain how it works. And yet people are so fearful of God's magic that they don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. And many people just react as if there's some sort of satanic worship going on. Like, yeah, no, I don't think so. I got enough trouble in my life. I don't really need that in my world. And the truth is God made Satan. Now, why did God make Satan? This is a tough topic for people. He made Satan to force people to choose to align themselves to become closer to the Lord in heaven. What I mean by that is, when you have a moment in time to decide, am I going to steal something from someone or not? Am I going to harm someone or not? Am I going to push on someone or not? Am I going to raise them up or not? Every single time that you choose against a loving action, you literally are choosing the satanic force in your life. Now, that doesn't mean we have to love on everybody. It doesn't mean we don't have the right to say no to people. But sometimes in life, we have to regroup. We have to think things over again. We have to look at all the facts one more time. We have to really say, you know, I'm going to give this person a chance in person. I'm not going to do this stupid text messaging, this teenage moronic way of talking to people. I'm not going to let technology be utilized to pretend to be me in social engineering. I'm not going to guess whether or not this person is really talking to me. I'm going to go face to face over a cup of tea and have a conversation, a good old fashioned conversation and say, hey, I think this is sort of what went down between us. Is this what happened in your perspective or have we been the victims of technologists and other people who steal opportunities and relationships that are loving from people. You see, in life, we've got moments of time to do everything that we can do to help a person go on in life. We have people who want to do it, but they want to put controls on what they're going to do for you. And that's not really unconditional love. That's saying, I'm going to do this only if you'll do X, Y, and Z. Yes, there are negotiations. Yes, there are contracts. Yes, there are agreements that can be made, but if that request is nowhere near with on that person's plan, it's highly unlikely to go forward. So let's be real. In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for people. Theft, property damage, all these other things that get in the way are wrong, immoral, illicit, and illegal. In life, we have to produce a result. We have to produce a family. We have to produce money. We have to produce enough in the bank for retirement. And if we don't, we have to sort of hope there's an inheritance of some kind from some wealthy old uh, relative or something like that, which is sort of a horrible way to say it. But it is true. That is how money is literally made in the world. That's how Trump got his money. He inherited. And there's a lot of things that we don't necessarily know about the other politicians in the world. Or how do they get into their positions? Was it because of their own efforts or was it because of other people's money? that move them into the right positions, the right power with the right people, with the right marketing directors, with the right speechwriters. I mean, let's face it, 
It takes more than one person to get things done in this world. Now, when I talk like this, what does it mean? It means I'm talking about real life. I'm talking about how do you promote yourself? How do you move yourself to the next level of life? How do you literally get your life aligned with something so fabulous that you're ready to explode all over the place? I have a great little product. I've been trying to sell it for years. It's been incredibly difficult to sell a lot because nobody's ever heard of it before, which is much like it was when vitamin C first came out. But in truth, people are just skeptical about anything that's all natural. And that's ridiculous. Now, I have some skepticism about one of the products, but the main product does its job. It allows you to have more energy, allows you to have good cellular health. There's a lot of things that have been proven after 40 years of research. But people don't want to listen to and hear it. And that's a sadness because they miss out on not only good health and good science, but they also miss out on a good opportunity for residual income, which every human being in this world needs. Now, in life, we have moments of time to make the difference for people. If you like the authentic way in which I talk, if you like the transparent aspects of my audio cast, even though sometimes I've got music going off in the background because I'm in a public place, I would say please ignore the music. I'm not trying to infringe on anyone's copyright with the music. It's just something that sometimes gets picked up through the microphone. But openly, if you're looking for a way to make a life worth living and are terrible with having by helping other people, I could use a few sales. I could use a few marketing opportunities. I could use a few Japanese language students. And openly, by doing that, I have a chance to get my life back on track in this world. Now, this has been Blake Henson of Blaze Communications LLC saying thanks for listening.